was the fairy dust of fame that came with the Maserati going to work for my channel. It all started, like most good things in my life, with a random phone call from Tyler Hoover. It was about nine o'clock at night, which usually isn't good, but he said, hey, how would you like a Car Trek car? And being that this was the second season of Car Trek that he was currently filming, I was like, I'm all ears, what, what is it? He quickly sends over three pictures of a Maserati that I can only describe as worn. It had a very flashy exterior, courtesy of the amazing wrap job that Freddie had done to it. And then the next two pictures were a bit concerning. It was an engine bay that was coated in fire extinguisher powder and a baffling interior picture that just kind of was crooked and showed some weird leather mat and a fire extinguisher sitting in the passenger seat, but I could see that it was a manual. Obviously, I'm titillated. I asked Tyler, you know, how much are we looking at here? I was kind of thinking 20 grand, 30 grand, and he came back to me with five grand. And I instantly said, I'm interested. I will let you know for sure tomorrow. And this is key because my wife was asleep. <laughs> this was, or would have been the first car that I would have bought specifically for the channel. And at the time, and still, five grand was not a decision that I could make without at least getting a nod from my wife. Tyler kind of didn't say much, but I started getting so excited. I called my dad, I called my best friend, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, there's this Maserati and it's it's only this much, but you know, it, and it's in bad condition, you know, but, but, but you know, selling it to everybody else around me. One hour later, Tyler texted me back and said, too late, car sold. I went from being <laughs> as excited as I've ever been about pretty much anything in my life to that low, like butterflies, like just gut-wrenching loss. Cause I was like, how did I let this slip through my fingers? I thought I gave him a, a yes. Turns out John Ficarra, which I didn't know at the time, Tyler told me that the, the appraiser for Car Trek season two heard what Freddie was gonna sell it for, saw it and said, I'll take it. So, man, I'm just, I'm kicking myself. I, I go to bed. I decide to just try one last thing the next day, text Tyler and be like, will he take 7,500 for it? I decided to, to, to offer him up. Tyler's like, I don't know, I'll see. And then I get a text from Tyler goes, no, you're back in for five. Appraiser doesn't want it anymore. And I'm like, oh, oh I'm, I'm, back. I'm right back up. The roller coaster has gone up and I'm, I'm back up. I'm like, the car's mine again, this is so great. So I, I text Tyler, I was like, how do I send you the money? Like, I need to secure this. I do not want this going away again. An hour or two passes, I'm at work and I'm just keep checking my phone nervously, wanting this Maserati. And I get another text. Never mind. John Ross of Watch Air Go found out the car was for sale, offered him 10. It's his. Sorry. I was like, oh, I certainly, I can't. I can't beat that. Of, of course he's gonna do it. It's a no-brainer for his channel too. The car's gone again. <laughs> Tyler lets me sit and just mill in my misery for a while before calling me and saying, I'm just messing with you. Somebody told me to do that. And I'm like, oh, and he has no idea the roller coaster of emotions I've been on. He's only seeing my texts where I'm playing it cool. He tells me I'm driving the car right now. It was the final day of filming when they had all switched cars, if you guys have watched season two. Uh, they, he was kind of told me, he's driving it right now, car drives great. You know, it's got some stuff, but I think you're gonna be happy with it. And next thing you know, I paid Freddie and the car is being shipped to Wichita. One of the deals was, the cars were all in the same place. Tyler's CL65 and the Maserati both had to come back together because why not? It just makes sense. So arrival day comes, I go pick up Tyler at his house, bring him to my warehouse where the cars are being dropped off. And Tyler had no idea how big of a deal this car was to me. To, he, to him, he still thinks, oh, you're buying the car. Not excited about it at all. I've got ants in my pants. I'm so excited about having this car. He shows up, my family is there with cameras and stuff because they're all thrilled about this. Like the gravity of it. I'm like, I'm getting my first YouTube car and, and what a car it is. And I think that actually did make an impact on Tyler because he was like, 
why are you guys so excited about this? <laughs> it's this cheap Maserati coming, you know, from whatever. And I'm like, yeah, but did you hear the word Maserati in there? That's exciting. The time comes when the gate drops on the transport and there it is, still filthy from the desert and track days in all of its glory. And the first time I heard that thing start, still goosebumps. <laughs> it backs out of the trailer. I could see it's filthy. The window, the driver's window is stuck down. And I was just like, nothing mattered. I was like, this is, this is the coolest thing ever. And of course, Tyler's going, ah, look at this thing, kind of kicking at it. And isn't this thing terrible? Kind of a, a kind of a joking. And I'm like, yes, but no, everything, it's perfect. <laughs> I took it around the block for the first time with Tyler. And the first thing I noticed was that the seat was also broken and it was stuck in a really far back and seat leaned all the way back motion to where I felt like a little kid holding myself up with the steering wheel trying to drive this thing. The clutch is toasted, everything's rattling, there's wires in your face, but the noise canceled all that out. It was incredible, still is. But now came time to do the work and make this car my Maserati. It's the Car Trek Maserati, it always will be, but now I need to make it work for my channel. And what do you, where do you even begin on this car? Well, the first thing was an oil change, which is something I had never done before, a dry sump oil change on a Maserati. Now, of course, at the dealership, they'd charge 500 something dollars for this, not because it's difficult, but because they can. In Wichita, we do not have a Maserati dealership, so I just wanted to start simple. I think I can do that. Let's do it. Of course, I do all of the right things. I order the Maserati oil filter and I learn how to change the oil on this thing. Of course, it's this weird process where there's several drain points, but I did it. And I think that really broke the ice of being like, all right, I think this car is fixable. The next couple of things we tackled were the driver's side window. Upon disassembly of the door, it turns out there was this little gear that strips on them. That little gear, $110. I'm not kidding, it's smaller than a dime. So this was my first foray into how much is this gonna be to fix? And it turns out a lot. The big reason that people get rid of these cars is because they're very cheap to acquire, but because everybody also says, well, it's basically a Ferrari, it's basically a Ferrari. Yes, so you've got your cheap car that has Ferrari costs to fix, and I'm learning this firsthand. And the seat, which I thought was gonna be a nightmare, I uh, started looking around for seats, they were like, $1,200 for a new seat. I'm like, oh my gosh, that this is gonna be a significant chunk. Turns out it was just unplugged underneath. They have a tendency to unplug themselves if you <laughs> scoot them back too much. The repair process is going great. I can kind of drive the car around now because it's a regular car again. One thing about this for YouTube content was I was doing these repairs still not being able to release a video for the car because it didn't make sense. Nobody, the nation, didn't know what the car was. If I just jumped the gun and said, I bought a car from Car Trek and it's this wild looking Maserati, people wouldn't know what it is because that season of Car Trek hadn't aired yet. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing tougher than sitting on these videos that I'm very excited about with this ridiculously amazing car. Now, as excited as I was to share these videos that I had shot with the Maserati, I also had a great deal of anxiety because I had now spent a lot of money and done a lot of things for videos that I wasn't sure were going to work. Yes, Car Trek is successful, but was anybody gonna watch this on my channel? Like, I'm not Tavarish. I'm not even, despite some people's confusion, Tyler Hoover. Who is going to watch me work on this car? I mean, was the fairy dust of fame that came with the Maserati going to work for my channel? release day came about and I just, the first video was just about acquiring the car or I have it, here's what it's like. And it was immediately successful. I mean, I released it, I believe on the same day as the last episode of Car Trek. So I kind of got that, hey, if you like Car Trek, you might like to see what happened to the car from it uh, kind of traffic. And it was, it was amazing. I had hardly any subscribers at the time, maybe 4,000 or something like that and this video did 100,000 views. Fast forward though, the car is now visually and mostly mechanically complete. People on my channel are loving it. It's now been 
deeply associated with my channel, which is the best possible thing you could ask for when taking a risk on a crazy car like this. But it had one last terrible thing wrong with it that was undeniable, and that was the clutch. And the clutch jobs on these cars are why a lot of people get rid of them. But I had Johnny, the car ninja, who said, I can do that no problem. That was, those were, <laughs> those were his words. And I said, okay, the, inter the internet says problem, but you said it. And he goes, I've done it before. I'll do it again. No problem. Now at the time, and a lot of people in the comments were saying, well, what, what's your problem here? I didn't have enough money to buy a brand new Maserati clutch. However, literally any clutch would have had more life on it than the one that's in it. So again, for some reason, I didn't ask him to do this, but Hoovy sends me an eBay listing. He was like, hey, this is out of a, a, a Cambia Corsa car, one of the F1 cars. It says it's got a lot of life in it, and it's like 500 bucks compared to $3,000 or whatever. I was like, well, let's, let's take the risk. You know, like it's gotta be better than what's in there. So I buy it, I take the car over to the Ninjas, and what ensued is the most crazy clutch replacement job I've ever seen in my life. I mean, we had to get the transmission table out. You have to take the rear end out of the car and kind of dangle it. There was so much involved. I couldn't believe the things that Johnny was just going, oh, easy, and just taking off and doing. It was, it was insane to watch this job get done. At the end of it, put the clutch in, and this was the, the big risk. It was like, is it gonna be any better? Boy, was it. After a little clutch adjustment, I finally got to drive the car for what it was. I always had thought, even with a slipping clutch, I was like, this thing's pretty fast. I thought it was about C5 Corvette fast, which is about all you can expect from a, a Maserati. That's kind of the power level and everything it was working with. But now that I had a clutch that actually could bite, I was like, wow, this car feels genuinely fast. And having that thing wrap up to 8,000 RPM, just hear this thing singing and the power actually going to the ground, I was like, wow. I mean, I'm now at a point with this car where I'm like, my goodness, what a, what a purchase. So I was the first person to buy an X car Trek car and see some YouTube success from it. But since then, others have seen wild success from purchasing X car Trek cars. The car wizard himself, after buying Freddy's 308, gained 60,000 subscribers in a day. That's unheard of. And then of course you have Alex Palmieri of Legit Street Cars. He purchased the CL65, a season mate with the Maserati, and has experienced wild success from that. And these guys are both tearing into them and showing the cars in a way that everybody is just loving. So it turns out you can buy a car from a TV show and experience some YouTube success from it. Premier Financial Services has been a sponsor of the VinWiki YouTube channel for the last four years, and we love them for that, but we also love their simple lease. It's one of the most powerful tools in the world of exotic car financing. It allows you to minimize your payment, minimize your down payment, have the flexibility to move in and out of cars, and take all of the advantages that are available to a leasing structure. So check them out at the link in the description below. We appreciate their continued support of VinWiki, and since you heard about them last here on the channel, they were actually acquired by First Financial Bank USA. And what does that mean for you? It means they're now larger than any of the other exotic car banks you may have heard of. They can move faster, buy more deals, and give you even better customer service. So thank them for their continued support of VinWiki and use them as your tool to buy your dream car soon.